thanks a lot for accepting my abstract and I would like to to talk about uh, a non-canonical account of uh, abstractionist programs and uh, a particularly a, an arbitrary version of the Fugian abstractionist program. Uh, so uh, Fugian abstractionist programs uh, um, is usually um, composed by a logical theory and augmented with one or more abstraction principle that are by conditional of this form uh, for every A and B, the abstract of A is equal to the abstract of B if and only if A and B are in an equivalent relation L. Um, with the Phrygian program, I, I mean um, both the original Phrygian logicism, but also um, different kinds of uh, Phrygian revisions uh, like neologicism or um, uh, different proposals in the last century um, tried to uh, obtain a consistent subsystem of uh, um, original Phrygian Grundgesetze. Uh, all these uh, um, systems, uh, I, I think, share um, an epistemological and also a metaphysical project. The epistemological uh, general project of the Phrygian Obstructionist Program uh, consists in supporting the idea of an a priori knowledge of arithmetic Usually this thesis is supported by an epistemological assumption concerning the a priori knowledge of logic. Um, an epistemological thesis in case of a neo <coughs> neologicist programs, uh, namely the a priori knowledge of uh, a, a particular abstractionist uh, abstraction principle in principle and uh, a foundational thesis, namely um, the proof that arithmetic is der derivable um, in the Phrygian idea of directly from logic and in the neologicist case uh, from second order logic augmented with the Hume principle. Um, concerning the metaphysical part of the project, and I will focus on, on this part of the project, um, you we consider a um, Phrygian Platonist project as involving a at least three, uh, three theses, uh, truth value realism, uh, mathematical Platonism, and namely the idea that abstract objects um, are um, autonomous, uh, so mind independent, not located in space and time and casually related with us, and uh, specifically that uh, logical and mathematical objects are abstract objects. Uh, but also um, the thesis that characterizes Phrygian Platonist uh, concern the access to this um, abstract realm and uh, Phrygian proposal and uh, the idea that is shared also by neologicism and other Phrygian programs is that uh, um, the intelligibility of the abstract realm and laws is mediated by uh, language. Um, this, is, uh, this idea is uh, included in the Phrygian context principle but also in the neologicist syntactic priority thesis. So there is the idea that metaphysics, the metaphysics of arithmetic mirrors the syntactical structure of language. And, um, uh, I think that uh, the epistemological project and the metaphysical project of Phrygian Platonists that I briefly recap in this slide uh, constitute what we can call uh, robust abstractionism. Um, but uh, um, my, my suggestion is that the context principle and the syntactic priority thesis are not sufficient to support this version of mathematical Platonism uh, because the synthetic priority thesis guarantees an access to a realm of existent object but it is enabled to explicitly characterize them as abstract in the Platonic meaning and namely has fully characterized it, not located in space and time, mind independent and casually unrelated objects. So 
the idea for this talk is to try to disentangle uh, the other assumption of uh, the argument that are implicit in the Phrygian project, in, in particularly in the Phrygian Platonism, and to explore non-alternative paths opened by diffusing each of these other assumptions. So to explore possible non-Platonist Phrygian abstractionist project. Uh, the goal of this uh, alternative uh, project um, is to preserve the epistemological part of uh, abstractionism um, and partially also of uh, uh, the metaphysical the metaphysical project, particularly uh, truth value realism and the linguistic access to the ontology that is. Um, summarize it in the synthetic priority thesis. But uh, I think that uh, by renouncing to this uh, different uh, implicit assumption, we obtain um, a semantic that is uh, compatible with the stru structuralist account of the abstract real. Um, so very briefly, I think that uh, um, the, the kind of uh, um, project I presented uh, uh, the beginning of the, the presentation, namely robust abstractionism, uh, implicitly uh, presupposes not only uh, the syntactic priority thesis and uh, um, its assumption, namely a uniform at face value reading of the arithmetical vocabulary, but also a canonical account of reference, namely the thesis that we can have a uniform interpretation of all the expression of the same syntactical category uh, by means of a canonical interpretation function, and uh, um, the assumption of a genuine semantics, namely the idea that semantics mirrors reality. Um, and these three um, implicit assumptions are a um, necessary part of the Phrygian arguments for Platonism. Uh, I would like to explore, uh, on the other side, nominalist version of neologicism uh, that we can obtain by renouncing to one of these three uh, meta-theoretical assumptions uh, in order to save and to enhance uh, the relational result and argument supporting the epistemological project, at least and partially the metaphysical one, about uh, arithmetical a priori, a priori uh, on the metaphysical side. Uh, we will test if these uh, weakenings um, uh, are able to support also metaphysical Platonism. Uh, I think that the three possible alternatives are a kind of austere abstractionism, um, uh, namely an abstractionist project um, that we can obtain by renouncing Phrygian semantics and metaphysics, and an example of austere abstractionism is usually considered uh, Dammex intolerant reductionism. Uh, then a deflationist, um, uh, the second alternative is a deflationist uh, um, abstractionism that we obtain by renouncing to the canonical account of reference. So what we obtain is abstractionism without the typical Phrygian semantics. And uh, the example that I would like to discuss today is uh, what I call arbitrary logicism, uh, that is, I think, compatible with the structuralist metaphysics. But there is also another possible uh, alternative that I would like only to, to mention in this uh, uh, general picture, uh, that is the redundancy um, abstractionism that we obtain by renouncing to the idea of a genuine semantics, um, in, which is an abstractionist project without Phrygian, directly without Phrygian metaphysics, so a kind of a fictional abstractionism. Um, uh, very briefly concerning the first alternative, uh, the austere um, abstractionism, uh, we obtain this alternative by renouncing to an at face value reading of the abstractionist vocabulary, following which abstraction operator are term forming operator and abstract terms are complex singular terms. Uh, alternative to this um, um, 
proposal uh, presupposes that we have a paraphrase uh, of the abstractionist vocabulary. Uh, possible example of this kind are uh, quantification or reading of the abstract terms, Russell, um, reading that are analog to Russellian, in, uh, Russellian reading of indefinite expression, and as I mentioned before, uh, Dammet's proposal of an intolerant reduction here, uh, following which abstraction principle explicitly defined the uh, left hand side as uh, unstructured holes uh, devoid of any syntactic pattern structure. Uh, the idea is that we are assuming uh, that we have a misleading grammatical form of the abstractionist vocabulary uh, that precludes the sharement of any genuine semantical structure and commit us to denying that there are abstract objects. Uh, so mm, I think that this alternative uh, commits us to a nominalist uh, renounce uh, um, to the arithmetical uh, real. Uh, but the alternative I um, would like to focus on is the, the, flux, the second one, namely the deflectionist abstractionism uh, that we obtain by renouncing to what I briefly call um, canonical uh, account of reference. Can a canonical account of reference includes at least two uh, meta-theoretical assumptions that are a uniform interpretation of all the expression of the same syntactical category. Uh, so. Um, to the idea that we have a unique notion of reference uh, for expression explicitly and implicitly defined. Um, and the idea is that this assumption, when it is combined with the, the idea of a genuine semantics, um, uh, imposes the idea of a unique notion of object. And the other um, assumption is uh, uh, the adoption of a canonical interpretation function whose values are singular, determinate, and knowable items of the domain. And also in this case, if we are assuming also genuine semantics, we are introducing uh, implicitly in the project uh, the Platonist notion of object. Uh, so um, one of the reasons to, uh, to renounce this kind of uh, uh, assumption is that this assumption um, already includes Platonist thesis that they should support. Uh, by renouncing to uh, this um, uniform interpretation and to, in specifically to the canonical interpretation function for the abstractionist vocabulary, what we obtain is a deflationary reading of abstraction principle. Following this reading, abstraction principles are silent about the particular function that they select among all those that are able to map equivalent concept in the same object and non-equivalent concept in different object. Uh, abstraction function only have to index classes of their arguments by object of the codomain. So uh, the idea is that they impose a lower bound on the cardinality of the first order domain, but um, are neutral with uh, respect to the identity of their values. And accordingly, abstract terms should only denote possible index of, uh, indexes of equivalence classes, but are indifferent to their specific nature. Uh, anyway, a uh, deflationist reading of the instructionist uh, uh, programs um, uh, is a non-canonical, uh, less demanding reading of the abstraction in general that is sufficient to achieve the mathematical result, but is still a negative characterization of the abstraction, uh, so it is unable to support or to exclude the epistemological and the metaphysical logicist and neologicist project. So it is unable to determine the the epistemological status of the assertion principle, and it is also enabled to determine a kind of object realism uh, that we would like to support in this kind of project. Uh, so I would like to suggest a positive characterization of this kind of uh, non-canonical non account by uh, proposing a semantical distinction between the meanings of abstract and non-abstract expression of the same syntactical category, and also by exploring the adoption of a non-canonical interpretation function uh, for the abstractionist vocabulary. I think that uh, an example in this direction that I not totally uh, follow but is uh, a relevant uh, um, 
proposal um, is provided by Dammet with the distinction between realist reference of proper names and thing reference. Uh, in Dammet's proposal, is, um, a realist reference is the relation that an expression bears uh, uh, to the object it sent for. And in the thin reference, uh, for uh, Dammet, uh, the reference of incomplete expression is uh, um, their semantical role, namely the contribution that this expression affects to the determination of the truth condition of the sentences in which uh, they occur. And in this uh, Dammet's proposal, we are assuming a distinction, a syntactical distinction between complete and incomplete expression and an alternative between uh, um, realist and thin notion of reference. Um, what I am uh, suggesting is, uh, on the contrary, a distinction between, not a syntactical distinction, but a distinction between base vocabulary and implicit definienda. So, between expression of the base language, uh, like uh, logical constants or explicitly defined terms, and expression extending the base language, so the expression that are ruled and implicitly defined by the axiom of the theory. I think that this kind of distinction is uh, useful also because it is analog to the distinction between observational and theoretical vocabulary of science, um, following which the meaning of the theoretical expression is fixed by the axiom themselves and exhibit a, character a characteristic indeterminacy. So in our case, uh, we are considering arithmetical vocabulary as composed by primitive expression, implicitly defined by Hume principle, whose meaning contextually depends on the theory axiom. Uh, so I am assuming a unitary account of implicit definition. Um, I think that this, um, this uh, kind of distinction is uh, also compatible with the general framework of uh, Fregian programs because it enhances also a, a theoretical access to the ontology uh, that is uh, deeply compatible uh, with the syntactic priority thesis. Following syntactic priority thesis, we know that objects are what singular terms stand for. What we are adding in this way is that we also which object singular terms stand for, um, uh, accordingly with their semantical role, uh, namely in order to determine the truth condition of the sentences in which they occur, is pre-theoretically fixed only in case of the best language, but depends on their semantical role in case of expression implicitly defined by the axiom. Uh, and the um, second uh, difference, um, between this account and Dammet's proposal is that the uh, semantical role in this account is not an alternative to realist reference. Semantical role acts with a uh, necessary features of meaning uh, in general and contribute to fix the reference of the vocabulary, uh, in, in our case of the assertionist vocabulary, in general of the vocabulary when it is not provided in the meta theory. Um, so following, uh, uh, precisely following the semantical role, reference of the abstract singular terms is any element of the domain that is able to make true the sentences in which they occur. So arithmetical sentences are verified by any object of the domain appropriately related to the concept and any of these uh, objects could be the reference of uh, uh, abstractionist vocabulary. Uh, so we obtain a theoretical notion of reference that is weaker than the pre-theoretical notion of canonical realistic reference usually ascribed to the singular terms of the base language because it is unable to select singular determinate and knowable items uh, that is compatible with uh, realist reference without because it is part of this kind of realistic reference when it has not a full identification, uh, and I think it is possible to formalize it by arbitrary reference. So uh, we can follow a different kind of uh, arbitrariness. Uh, I skip the details concerning quantificational arbitrariness and I would like to follow an epistemic kind of arbitrariness, following which singular terms denote singular standard object, but we are not able to identify this object among a range of candidate denotation. And accordingly, function symbol uh, denote a singular set of ordered pairs whose second element we are unable to distinguish into a range of equivalent items. 
uh, I think that we can also model this arbitrary interpretation of destructionist theories by following a Carnap um, strategy. Uh, that is composed by two main steps, a translation of the extractionist language in a choice language uh, by providing a ramification of the original abstractionist theory and then introducing explicit definition of the extractionist vocabulary um, by means of uh, choice term. And then we can so directly apply an evaluation of the uh, choice translation in a choice functional semantics. Um, I skip these details. I I don't know how much time still I I have. Maybe uh, it is late. Uh, I don't. So I don't know, maybe ten minutes. Sorry, I am asking. Ten minutes. I... About ten minutes. Okay. Um. I I, I would like to only mention some aspect of the abstractionist epistemology. Um, the idea is that an arbitrary interpretation of uh, abstractionist program uh, support um, a logistic strategy, um, a logistic strategy. This, this is because uh, um, the, a priori, the a priority in the Fregian project is supported by the idea that abstraction uh, vocabulary is reducible to logic. Um, in this uh, part of the debate today, uh, we use a semantical meaning of logicality as topic neutrality, following which an abstract, an abstract expression is logical if and only if its extension is invariant under permutation and isomorphism. And in, in this debate, um, it is usually um, distinguished this notion of logicality among uh, three different uh, kind of criteria, logicality of the abstraction principle, logicality of the abstraction relation, and logicality of the abstraction function. Uh, the main um, criteria that has been proposed in this uh, uh, part of debate are con concerning abstraction principle, contextual invariance, following which an abstraction principle is contextual invariance if and only if for any abstraction function from the second order to the first order domain and for any permutation, the permutation of the function satisfies the principle whenever the function does. Uh, this kind of principle is very weak, uh, it is implied and we can prove that it is equivalent to a uh, weak invariance of the abstraction relation. Concerning abstraction relation, we have different criteria and particularly uh, the strongest one, uh, double internal invariance, that is able to select logical abstraction relation and then principle. Um, but we will focus on the third kind of logicality, namely the logicality of the assumption function. The main criterion that has been discussed is the criterion of objectual invariance. Uh, so an abstraction function is objectual invariant if and only if um, the function is invariant as a set theoretic entity, so, uh, so has a, a, a a set of ordered pairs uh, composed by a concept and its related object. And the problem is that this criterion phase for any function from the second order to the first order domain in any case in which the domain contains um, at least two elements. And uh, Antonelli in a paper of 2010 proved also that uh, um, if the relation is at least uh, weakly or internal invariant, uh, the function is not objectual invariant. Uh, so, uh, in the canonical account of abstraction, we have uh, a kind of dilemma concerning logicality because we have a logicality criterion for relation and for definition, uh, but the same criteria that is able uh, to provide the logicality criteria for uh, definition, for um, abstraction relation and for definition. And uh, for example, to select the uh, Hume principle has a imp logical implicit definition. Uh, but the same criterion of logicality fails for the related definiendum for the reason I mentioned it because. So this uh, um, logicality criterion fits precisely in case of operator related to logical relation and abstraction principle. And I think that uh, uh, we can um, solve this uh, kind of dilemma precisely by an adoption of uh, an arbitrary formulation of uh, uh, the abstractionist program. Uh, 
I think I can skip the details of this proposal. Um, anyway, it is, uh, um, the idea is that we are able to propose a local solution of logicality dilemma for neologism because uh, given this arbitrary interpretation of the abstraction function, we are able to prove that, cardinally, okay, that cardinal operator that is implicit Implicitly defined by means of uh, isomorphism invariant relation of ethnumerosity, he is uh, in its turn weakly or isomorphism objectual invariant. Um, in, in my opinion, this uh, arbitrary account is also useful to introduce um, a distinction between second order and first order abstraction principle because we can prove that any first order abstraction operator is not weak weakly objectual invariant. Um, it is also useful because uh, it, uh, um, uh, it uh, allows us to distinguish between second order abstraction principles that are consistent or inconsistent. Um, uh, for example, um, a basic law 5 that has a coextensionality relation on the right hand side that satisfies other criteria of invariance, uh, implicitly define an operator, um, uh, the extensional operator that uh, uh, does not satisfy the uh, weak objectual invariance criterion that I am uh, suggesting. Uh, we can also prove that uh, any um, a possible revision of uh, um, implicit definition of extensional operator satisfy this criterion of uh, um, isomorphism objectual invariance and so we can I think recover the general Fregian project uh, showing that uh, in their uh, arbitrary interpretation the implicit definienda of consistent second order abstraction principle are logical. But I would like to at least to mention in some minutes something about the um, metaphysical part of the project because the idea is that this criterion seems to be a useful criterion to carry out for the project. Uh, but I would like to um, emphasize that arbitrary reference I am. Uh, I am assuming um, is not an, arm, an armless alternative to the canonical one because it presupposes a non-logicist view of implicit definition and particularly a reading of the assertion principle as structural implicit definition of singular terms and uh, um, arbitrary reference is compatible with what also suggests the structural metaphysics of the abstract objects. Very briefly, we usually distinguish uh, into the general um, group of implicit definition, objectual implicit definition like abstraction principle, where we uh, consider uh, has a goal to have a, a unique reference for the definiendum. And on the other side, the structural implicit definition when we uh, admit the indeterminacy of the reference for definiendum. And, uh, the idea is that given an arbitrary interpretation of the abstractionist uh, vocabulary, we can consider uh, also abstraction principle has a part of uh, has a proper subset of structural implicit definition, um, so uh, able to, to, to fix the reference of uh, uninterpreted terms in the, canonical, uh, in the canonical case has a unique reference, but in this arbitrary uh, way has indeterminate reference. And uh, I, I would like to, I, I briefly mentioned the, the, the general thesis maybe I can ask her to, to question about uh, these points. The idea is that this arbitrary account of mm, the metaphysical project supports some thesis, specifically the logicality of the abstract object, truth value realism and syntactic priority thesis. But if we are still assuming the last metatheoretical assumption at the beginning of the talks, namely the genuine semantics, uh, this arbitrary interpretation and the arbitrary semantics uh, diffuses Platonism because uh, um, it is uh, compatible with the structuralist thesis, it supports uh, a kind of object structuralism or, or, or of uh, a metaphysical arbitrariness. Uh, uh, I skip the details. Uh, the idea is that uh, um, it, it is compatible with uh, uh, truth value realism because truth value, reali truth value realism uh, presupposes the objectivity of the metaphysical facts. Um, 
but given an, a canonical account of abstraction principle, uh, truth value realism asks for a solution of uh, uh, the problem of the Caesar problem, namely the problem of the determinate truth value of mixed identity statement. Um, on the other side, given an arbitrary interpretation of the abstraction principle, uh, we can also uh, only dissolve uh, kind of problem. So we can, we can uh, remain indifferent regarding the determinate truth value of mixed identities. Uh, this is because uh, uh, mixed identity statements are uh, similar to conjecture in mathematics. Uh, given Fringian accounts, we know that they are true or false, determinately true or false, even if no one is able to prove or to confront it and there is no guarantee that someone will be able to do. Uh, because we can consider in that case a, a, a conjecture as an infinite uh, conjunction of statement, each of one, um, each of which is determinately true or false. Um, in a similar way, we can consider the identity statement like Julius Caesar is equal to the number of F as determinately uh, true or false because uh, uh, even if we are unable to fix the reference of uh, the number of F, uh, we can read the identity statement as an infinite disjunction of statement, each one of which is determinately true or false. Uh, so I think that arbitrary interpretation does not affect the objectivity of the abstraction statement and their truth value reals. In a similar direction, I, I think that it is compatible with the thesis of the synthetic priority thesis. Uh, but what I would like to stress is that if we assume that meaning reflects the general aspect of the arithmetical realism, semantical indeterminacy of the abstractionist vocabulary um, emphasizes that abstract objects are only characterized as indexes of equivalence classes. So, um, candidate denotation of a, of a, a same abstract terms share the relation with candidate denotation of other terms. And and we also have uh, the invariance criterion I mentioned uh, before that presupposes that abstract objects uh, are characterized only by their structural relation. So uh, the um, suggestion on the metaphysical side is that we have incompleteness of this abstract object concerning their internal, internal nature. Um, the number of Fs in this, uh, in this perspective is the index of the equivalence classes of concepts that are equinumerous to F. Uh, so the number of F is anything, any object able to play this role. Uh, this means that mathematical statements uh, are about not the object, but the role or the places has characterized by their structural relation. Uh, I would like to suggest uh, that this uh, perspective is compatible with a specific kind of uh, structuralism, uh, relative structuralism, um, that is a kind of uh, um, nominalist view about abstract structure, uh, but is uh, realist about the object. Uh, an alternative uh, an alternative comparison is uh, between arbitrary logicism and the notion of a metaphysical arbitrariness suggested by, by Fine. Uh, anyway, I skip this, this uh, last slide. Uh, I'm sorry for the, my, my timing. Uh, the general idea is to put an alternative to robust abstractionism um, that is characterized by a metaphysical project that is Fregian Platonism. Uh, I mentioned the three alternatives, austere abstractionism, deflationist abstractionism, and redundancy abstractionism. And I focus on the second one, deflationist abstractionism, particularly discussing a possible implementation as by means of an arbitrary semantics. And I would like to suggest that this is compatible with the epistemological problem project because it is able to support a periodicity of arithmetic uh, but it is problematic for the metaphysical part of the project because it is uh, uh, strongly compatible I think with the structuralism uh, so thank you thank you very much I think I have to stop sharing yes thank you so much Ludovica are there any questions uh, Oh. 
So I have a question. Uh, According to the structuralist position you propose, what are structures? Are they arbitrary structures like generic structures in Leon Horstein's conception, or they are not arbitrary themselves? Mm -hmm. Thank, thanks very much. I think that there are two possible uh, alternatives. Um, I think that in this case, um, structures are not arbitrary themselves. Uh, so it is an alternative to Orsten account, I think. Um, uh, but this is my, my my view. The idea is that by abstraction principle, you uh, give a, um, an arbitrary an arbitrary account of the objects, but uh, this is not uh, directly related to generic structure. Uh, so to an arbitrary account of destruction themselves. Uh, but uh, this perspective is not incompatible with Orsten account because Orsten account directly focuses on uh, um, a structuralist view of uh, different theories such as mathematics and so on. In this kind, I, I would like to start precisely uh, from a, a reading of abstraction principle that is a specific tools. So what I would like to say is that an arbitrary, um, a, a literal reading of an abstraction principle commit us uh, to an arbitrary nature of the object that, uh, that they are implicitly defining. Uh, this, this idea is weaker than the idea that are uh, arbitrary also the structure. It is uh, uh, quite silent about uh, the arbitrariness of the structure themselves. This is focused on the nature of the objects, I think. I, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? So I have another question for you, actually. Um, <clears throat> um, so uh, if I understood co correctly, the structuralism you propose is that structures are not arbitrary uh, structures like in Leon Horsten's uh, conception. But then I wonder how to... Um, how to answer Hellman's permutation objection against structuralism. So originally Hellman's objection was against uh, Shapiro's version of non-eliminative structuralism, but uh, I think it can be applied to the conception of uh, abstractionist structuralism with struct where, where structures are not arbitrary, let's say, things. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I know this objection. I have an, a, a, an answer to this objection in this account. Uh, so probably mm, if you consider this uh, general objection, uh, Uh, probably my account should be uh, modified in order in order to to be to accept the idea of uh, generic structure to answer to 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 Alman's objection. Um, yes, thanks. I, I have to think about this uh, this problem because uh, usually in the abstractionist debate uh, we are only focused on. Uh, the nature of the objects. So the idea is, I would like to stress that, uh, okay, we are focusing on the object, but, but uh, abstraction, uh, abstraction principle um, does not 
commit us to uh, to real object to um, uh, to platonic object it is compatible with uh, a structuralist characterization of object as playing a role and as characterized by their structural relation uh, concerning structure i don't know uh, the idea is uh, I think uh, Phrygian abstractionist uh, programs uh, um, are probably uh, silent concerning structure because structure, um, structures are not the original object uh, they concern. Uh, so my um, naive characterization is uh, uh, as a not arbitrary structure, but considering uh, all the uh, metaphysical objection in this debate, probably Orstern uh, account of generic structure is uh, is best suited to, to to also for this project. I, I have to uh, to think about a bit. Th thanks a lot. Okay, thank you so much. In fact, I would like to ask some more questions and continue discussing the issue with you, but unfortunately we are running low on time and we have to uh, proceed to the next talk. Yes, thank you Th so much. Th thanks, thanks very much. We, we can also stay in touch, maybe also by email. Th th thanks very much.